Okay, we'd like to introduce uh, Chase Johnson to the interview room here at the 24 Genesis Invitational. Chase, congratulations, you're in the field uh, on the Charlie Sifford Memorial mm -hmm. Sponsor Exemption. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As, in case people missed it, Chase is in the field um, on the Charlie Sifford Sponsor Exemption. Uh, memorial sponsor exemption. Um, congratulations. Just can you tell us just how that came about? What, where were you when you found out about that? Mm -hmm. What sort of excitement you had when you discovered that? Yeah. Um, you know, I followed the Charlie Sifford Award closely the last couple of years. I've uh, written letters a couple of times. I've gotten, you know, some feedback back. And uh, so this year I was in my living room with my fiance Katie and our dog, D for Dog. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Annalini called me and uh, we're talking, he says, hey, you know, what do you got coming up? And I uh, just chilling at home, got some stuff coming. And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm looking over number 10 right now. and I'm curious how you're going to play it. So uh, if you still want to play, I think I can make that happen. I think, I think I'll, I'll take the position. So, yeah, it was really exciting. We were freaking out. Defer could sense the excitement and he started barking like crazy and Katie's trying to calm him down. And so uh, it was really exciting. Well, that's great. Um, this is this will be your fifth PGA Tour event. Um, what have, what have you learned in the PGA Tour events that you've played so far? Uh, just to stay patient and play within myself. You know, um, last year was uh, I had a good season and you know validated some things that I was working on and kind of uh, finally got the cut breakthrough at Rocket Mortgage and then uh, went to Cabo uh, for Worldwide and you know found myself in contention through uh, the first couple rounds. And um, biggest thing I learned is just got to continue to go after it and make putts on the weekend. You know, I, I had played well, but kind of cooled down with the putter and fell down a little bit. Uh, one under on the weekend is not good enough for these guys. Um, so just stay patient and trust my process and just try and get some putts to fall. You're, you're a Kent State guy. Um, I believe you just missed uh, Corey Connors when you, when you played there. He might have left just before you started, but you, you had a practice round with him today, mm -hmm. I, I understand. What was it like reconnecting with him, and what, how did you find the golf course? What did you see out there? It was, uh, it's really fun, yeah. Corey's great. We, for a while, we played at the same course uh, in Jupiter, and uh, I haven't seen him for a while, so it was really cool to get around in with him today. And, you know, I was just kind of picking his brain a little bit, asking him on certain holes what he tends to do, and he was explaining certain things and where they put pins and, you know, tee shots. And, um, yeah, it was really fun being able to play with them again and uh, just kind of learn – from, he's, I think he's played out here six years uh, now, so just getting some feedback and stuff from experience obviously goes a long way. And uh, with how firm the course is, you got to know where you're hitting this ball. Terrific. We'll take some questions for Chase. If we, it's hard <coughs> to see up here, so just raise your hand, and we'll start with Dan, I think, on the left here. I know it's, it's kind of a big question, but what has Tiger Woods meant to you uh, in, in your life, in your, in your career, trying to pursue professional golf, and, and have you had any interactions with him since getting the exemption? Yep, uh, he's been huge uh, to my, he's my idol. You know, I grew up playing the Tiger Woods video games and everything, and um, they had this one feature uh, called Trophy Balls, and whenever you got an award, first eagle, back-to-back -back eagles, whatever. Um, and so my dad had taught me based off of that system. When I was four or five, we'd be practicing, and he created daddy trophy balls. And so if I succeeded at something in practice, I usually got like a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon cards after the round, but it taught me how to, you know, win at an early age and um first time i met him was at the worldwide technology event last fall and he just, I, first thing i thought was i need to get in the gym man this dude's so much bigger than me he's huge <laughs> like tv and stuff does not do justice how big he is um and had good conversation with him a little bit on the range who just kind of joking around he was there for a split second haven't gotten to catch up with him this week but you know, hopefully we can get something in before the tournament starts. Okay, we'll come to Todd in a minute. Chase, how does this tournament feel differently from the other PGA Tour events you've been in? I mean, obviously, there's not even fans here yet, but with a huge purse, um, chance to make a lot of money in this event and kind of prove a little bit more to yourself, how does this feel differently than anything else you've been in so far? Um, obviously, it's a signature event, so um, just from a prestigious level, it's, it's, you know, it's a major tournament, a uh, small field, the top players in the world, and so it's exciting to be able to play for the, you know, the purse against this competition, but ultimately, I'm just excited to test my game against 
a fantastic legendary golf course against the best players in the world and you know just see where I stand and hopefully at the end of the day at the end of the week you know I've played within myself and then everything else will fall into place and take care of itself. Was today the first round at Riviera? No, uh, so last, I was able to get out here and get some rounds in last month. Uh, completely different course when it's soaked and soft. Um, and so I played yesterday in the Pro-Am, played this morning, uh, nine with Corey, and then went out uh, seven or eight holes by myself after that. And so it's playing very different. You know, the fairways tighten up a little bit when they're firm and rolling through uh, some of the dog legs. Greens are firmer, you know, you're, if you're above the pin on certain Parts. When I was here last month, it wasn't an issue. Now you got to really just be conscious of where the pins are and um, if you get into trouble, where you need to leave it to save a par. So uh, learned a lot these last couple of days and ready to get after it. Thanks. Okay, we'll go over to the side with Jack. So, Chase, following up on Dan's question, like the admiration you had for Tiger and playing his video game and now mm -hmm. you're in a field against him, mm -hmm. how does, what's the thought behind that? <clears throat> it's really exciting. You know, I, in, uh, in the fall at Worldwide, I was really excited to play in the very first PGA Tour sanctioned event on a Tiger-designed golf course uh, at uh, El Cardinal, and it was it was exciting because you could see his creativity with irons and approach shots because you had to aggressively play to a position that was 40 feet away from the pin in order to use the slope and get it down to a kick in. Um, and now I've always wanted to play against him. Everyone from my generation does. Everyone from every generation wants to. And now being able to compete in the same tournament as him is its next level. And, you know, hopefully all goes well for both of us for the week and we can have uh, some late pairings going into the weekend. Second question. Uh, talk a little bit more about the stuff that your dad did to prepare you for, for golf. I love the story about the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What else is there that we, that we have? Uh, we don't have enough time for all of that. <laughs> um, so uh, one that everyone likes is uh, to play in conditions. When I was here for media day, it was 30 degrees and pouring rain. And uh, in Barberton, Ohio, in early 2000s, You'd see Chase Johnson and his dad out there with a hose, and his dad, and he's spraying me with the hose, and I'm hitting golf shots into the field behind our house. And someone asked me like, "How do you feel about that?" I was like, "Please, I had a super soaker compared with golf, or combined with golf. I'm I was living the dream as a kid outside. The better shot I hit, the more excited I got. And uh, yeah, there's so many others. He would create a little podium and ask me interview questions. Just like this, after I won a tournament on Tiger Woods video games. <laughs> so uh, he did a lot of stuff that you don't really see as a kid. And then when you're in the situation here, and I feel comfortable, and it, it was all worth it. Okay, we'll go to MK in the back there. Hey, Chase. Uh, just curious, out of all the stories and recipients that have come before you, why do you think your story was the perfect one to be the recipient for this opportunity? Um, you know, obviously, Tiger, with his, the relationship he had with his dad growing up and everything that they, uh, how he was trained and everything, our, my relationship with my dad was very similar, and the training was based off of a lot of the stuff that they had done. Um, I watched the Tiger Woods story movie religiously as a kid. It was, you know, like a TV film or uh, show kind of movie, very low budget, but I loved it, and a lot of the stuff that we saw in that we had took you know my dad never played golf really until a couple of years before I was born but read his book and uh, built a lot of my game off of you know everything that he learned from Tiger his dad his book and all that stuff so it was a huge influence and being out here is very exciting and for, from your dad's perspective and everything that he's taught you what's the one thing that you're going to carry with you as you tee it up on Thursday um the well, a very simple one. If you hit a bad shot, come back with a good one. That was He drilled that in when I was three years old. I mean, that's how you teach a, a kid to forget about bad shots. And uh, you're going to hit some good shots that don't get rewarded out here. So uh, they're going to come off as bad shots. And you just got to uh, come back with a good one and try and put yourself back in position. And that's going to be important this week. Chase, one other connection that you have with this tournament is Will Zalatoris. Mm -hmm. uh, Will was a, uh, a collegiate showcase winner here in 2015, mm -hmm. made his first start here, and he's a sponsor exemption this week also. Mm -hmm. 
you lost, uh, well, you finished runner-up to him at um, a Corn Free Tour event in Colorado yep. th four years ago, I think. Yeah, um, 2020, yep. What, what was that experience like, and you know, being in the hunt for the, probably the first time in a, on a tour event, um, and what did you learn from that? Um, it was exciting, and, you know, Will, our story kind of goes back until Callaway Junior Golf, uh, Junior World days, um, playing, I think we were all paired, me, him, and Davis Riley were all paired together in the same group, and then you know, fast forward all those years later through amateur stuff, we're battling. We played the third round together. I shot like 75, fell down the board a little bit. And then on Sunday, I shot the course record at TPC Colorado and came from behind and posted the clubhouse lead. And that the biggest thing I took away from that is, one, you're never really out of it. You can always, you know, get hot and, you know, make a comeback, kind of like Nick did this past week at uh, Waste Management on the back nine. So... Um, and then to see the putts going in, and then when you're that early, there's no cameras. And when you start getting in the um, contention, the cameras come out, and they're following you. And I responded and continued. I birdied, you know, four or five holes coming in uh, since they had appeared. And so just, you know, validating that and responding to the pressure, obviously knew that I was in. And then birdieing 18 to give myself a chance was really exciting. So uh, just to know that I could do it and put myself in contention at that level that early. It was only my second Corn Ferry event. So um, that was definitely a confidence booster. Terrific. It doesn't look like we have any more questions. So we appreciate your time and good yeah. luck this week. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.